13 dB of noise, high sensitivity, and it sounds like this. The SE Electronics 4400. Let's talk about From it. the mind of Mark Yoshimoto Nemkov. I have to tell you that 10 seconds before I hit record, I just saw an email that I just got shortlisted on another audition that I did with the 4400. Now, I've been working with it and auditioning with it. And auditioning with a brand new mic that you just got is really kind of, it's, it's borderline insanity. But I think that this mic, the SE Electronics 4400, fits my voice in a way that other mics that I've, I've tried, especially, especially in this price range, other microphones that I have currently just don't do what this does. And what is that that the SE Electronics 4400 does? What is it? I'll tell you what it is. There is something about this mic. It just, it sounds, it sounds natural. It sounds easy to listen to. So it's great for like this. When I'm just rambling into a microphone like this, it sounds, it sounds good. It sounds good on narration. It sounds great on character voice stuff. Yeah, you know, you, you could do a lot of character voice stuff with it. I, I, I think that this is all a great voice acting mic. <laughs> this, this microphone is such an incredible all-rounder. And the reason I'm so effusive about it is because I was totally wrong about this mic. I had been hearing about the 4400, the SE Electronics 4400. People have been trying to tell me what a good mic this is. And I've been like, yeah, whatever. I've been dismissive. And uh, you know what? I, I just kind of looked at it and I'm like, ah, it's a 414-ish clone. Yeah, what, you know, I don't, I'm not really a 414 guy. I, I missed the point entirely because it's not a 414 clone. It's a mic that has its own identity by being a, a chameleon of sorts. Because you can really shape the sound that is coming out of this mic in a way that I feel like I don't have other mics that do this quite as well as this does. And a lot of it is because, yes, it has a transformerless circuit. So there's no transformer in the circuit to, to thicken up the mids. It's just really very natural. What, you, what, what goes in is what comes out. But it's just kind of sprinkled with a little bit of, you know, I don't want to say fairy dust or, or magic. Okay, you know what it is? You know how you look better? You know how you think you look better in the mirror than when you do in pictures? <laughs> you know, you look in the mirror and you're like, oh, yeah, you know, and then you get a picture of yourself and I'm like, oh, my God, I look like crap. This is almost the same thing, except it's the, it, it, it's the same thing as you looking good in the mirror and, and also looking good in the picture. <laughs> you get what I'm saying? It, what you hear going in, just feels like, I, I don't know, it's, it feels inviting to me because it does sound so natural. It feels, I feel like I'm really capturing the nuance and the essence of what I'm trying to impart with my voice. And yet, again, the output is very, and I know I like to use the word malleable, but I think that very much fits here. Because when I first plugged this in, I plugged it in into a, a, a transformerless preamp in cardioid. And I was like, okay, well, it, it sounds okay. It, it didn't like, you know, blow my mind. Like everybody was like, oh my God, this mic is such, such a great sounding mic. And I was like, I'm like, okay, it's okay. And then I realized that, wait a second, this is just a paintbrush. <laughs> it's a terrible metaphor. This is just a tool. This is just the front end of the sound that I'm trying to reproduce. So why don't I put it through a different preamp? Why don't I take this really natural sounding transformerless mic and feed it through a transformer uh, input and output of a, of a preamp? So I have it running through a hairball Lola. And my God, I really, I really dig this sound a lot. I also have it running in hypercardioid. And hypercardioid is a tighter polar pattern. Than, than, you know, cardioid, obviously. And so there's something about hypercardioid that feels a little bit more focused. And I like that. I like the fact that it feels a little bit more focused. It feels a little bit more, you're getting a little less um, openness in the upper mids 
and a little bit more like I feel like it's a little bit tighter and a little bit more present in the lower mids. And I think that 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 feels very complimentary. I think this sound overall, this mic through the Lola is absolutely one of my favorite sounds. And and I mean, I'm just I am really just totally blown away by how great this mic sounds in general. The, you can really shape the sound coming out of this mic, depending upon what you do with it afterwards. And that, to me, is an incredible, incredible thing to consider. Because a lot of times when you use a mic like a, you know, an 87, 47, even a 414, mics that really have their own sonic identity in a way. You know, you, you're, you, it's like, okay, when you play, when you play through a Stratocaster, right? Stratocaster into a Fender has a certain sound. And it's like, okay, that's a Strat sound. That's a Tele sound. Microphones are the same way, you know? There's an 87 sound. There's a 416 sound. There's a flatter sound that you can get with uh, microphones that have, you know, basically flatter frequency responses. But getting a natural sound, getting something that feels like you, <laughs> but yet a little bit better, you know? So it's like, it is like, it's the mirror version of you, the version of you that looks better than you do. <laughs> it's... It it definitely makes it definitely make it makes me feel like I sound better than I really do in real life, but it sounds real life. It's the mirror that you in at the hotel that makes you look five pounds skinnier, but it it allows you to walk out of the hotel room five pounds skinnier. I mean, I I don't know how to express it other than to say that there is there's definitely some magic going on here, and the magic I think is in this capsule. Now, SE Electronics, they, 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 you know, again, they're not, uh, they're not reinventing the wheel. It's a K67 style capsule on a flat transformerless circuit. Generally, that combination yields something that sounds, uh, I, I don't know. I don't want to call it cheap. Eh? I don't, I don't want to call it uh, boring, but it doesn't, it doesn't really yield something that I feel works great. I feel like it yields something that is uh, fatiguing to the ears a lot of times. I feel like it yields something that just needs more. You know, it just doesn't sound balanced. But there's something about this combination, especially in HyperCard. And don't sleep on HyperCard. Don't sleep on HyperCard at all. HyperCard is great for voiceover. Hypercard, that more focused hypercardioid sound, is really something that will serve you well. Now, let me switch. Here, you know what? Let me switch it over to cardioid. Right there. I made, I made a face like it was a big effort, like just a little switch on the front. So in cardioid, right? I mean, it's, it sounds fairly similar. And if you're listening maybe on, a, on a, you know, an iPhone speaker or something like that, you may not notice that much of a difference. But it feels to me like definitely, yeah, there's a little bit more. It's a little less focused. It, it's a little, it, maybe this feels a little bit more like roomy, right? And when I say roomy, not, not necessarily like the whole room, but it, it feels like my voice is, a, is a, occupying a, a larger space than this does. This feels a little bit more focused and intimate. And that, to me, helps you get a better voiceover, especially for narration, especially for uh, commercial stuff. I think that if you can if you if you can impart the sense that you are having a conversation one on one with somebody. I feel like when I go to cardioid. I feel like when I go to cardioid I'm talking to a room full of people. I feel like when I go to hypercard we're sitting across from each other at a table, you know, having a coffee, having lunch, having a drink, sitting next to each other in a car. And having that conversation where I'm able to tell you about the, you know, the great deal going on somewhere, right? Or some new product or et cetera, et cetera. Because I want those conversations when I'm delivering that as a voiceover. I want that to feel like a conversation between you and I. It's a one-sided conversation. But I want to feel like what I'm saying was prompted by you talking about something that you are experiencing that needs a solution, whether it's a new dentist uh, you know, uh, you got to find a plumber 
Or, you know, what, I'm looking at new cars. What car do I get? Where do I get a good deal? Right? Who's got a, who's got a good special this month on the Hyundai Kona? <laughs> so if you, if, you, if you are doing voiceover, right? This is a mic that will cover a lot of ground. And, and again, multi-pattern mics are so much more valuable than cardioid only mics because you get you get like here right it's basically like i've given you two tonalities out of one mic so it's almost like having two mics but then switch it over to figure eight and this to me figure eight is hold on did i have enough oh hold on all right and there's figure eight i yeah i had it in omni um, i hate omni um, i'll never use omni for anything Unless maybe I'm spying on somebody and I have to put a mic in a room and turn it on and put it on Omni. But that doesn't happen too often. Um, the <laughs> figure eight to me is, is also a revelation. Because figure eight to me is, is a sound that you can use when you want to sound just really, really more natural. Imparting more of the room makes it feel more natural like when you're talking about something when you're talking about something that feels like you're talking to the room or you're talking to, and not necessarily just one person, right? Some commercials, and you have to understand the copy, and I'm not going to go into the details. Some commercials are, are really designed where you're talking like to really the listener. And then some commercials are designed where you're talking to the listeners, like the community. And I feel like figure eight gives you a little bit more of that sense of not, uh, of, not being artificial, you know, like you're actually in a room talking to people, maybe not necessarily giving a TED talk, but maybe you're, you're up in front of a group of people and you're talking about, you know, healthcare solutions for them. Or maybe, you know, I used to do this spot for, uh, where, where, where people, it was a, uh, it was a government agency that helped people with their child support issues. <laughs> <laughs> That's it. It's not funny. That's not a funny topic, but it's funny that I had to do this. And I always like had to, it was very like sympathetic, you know, like you, you, I, I'm not going to repeat the copy, but you get the idea. So if I'm talking to you in a way, like I'm talking to a community of people, I'm, I've come into the school board meeting to talk to you. <laughs> or I'm just talking to a bunch of people, a bunch of people, like I'm talking to the whole table of friends. Figure eight is great for that. And then I go back to HyperCard, and we're just talking, you and I. And that's what I love about this mic. You get four polar patterns, four polar patterns. Who gives you four polar patterns? Unless you get a tube mic. Not enough, not enough solid-state Fed mics give you four polar patterns. Four polar patterns. And HyperCard is a true revelation. So do I like this mic? Yeah. Do I, love, do I love this mic? Yeah. Do I think that this mic has a spot in the lineup, in my, in my toolbox? I do, and I think it has a spot in the booth. I think it has a permanent spot in the booth because, you know, the jobs that I've done with it, not necessarily like mid-forward, aggressive advertising jobs, but just stuff where it's, it's really supposed to be conversational, a guy talking, right? I've, uh, I've done... I've done a few of those, like bookings, and I've done a whole bunch of auditions. And again, auditioning with a brand new mic you just got is, is not something I would suggest to anyone, unless you, have, unless you are just completely nuts or you have uh, you know, enough experience to understand what it is that you're, you're, you're giving the client or the potential client. And this thing has shortlisted a bunch of auditions, and I've just started auditioning with it just a few days ago. So I'm, I'm waiting to see which one of those bears fruit. Um, but overall, you know, character voice stuff is amazing on it. Narration is great on it. Um, this will be, this, honestly, uh, I'm, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to call this the best bang for your buck under $500 mic that's out there. That I've tried. Um, because that's a tough price range. Finding something, because anything really under 500 bucks is, because um, again, you got to think about, it's not so much what you're paying for the mic. 
But like a $300 microphone is really made up of uh, more inexpensive parts, uh, maybe less quality control, right? I mean, the when you pay a little bit more for a mic, you're hopefully getting more. And $500 is a really interesting price point for me because I think $500 is really kind of uh, the top range for a lot of people, what they would spend on a microphone. And I think that, uh, I, you know, it might be aspirational for some people to spend $500 on a microphone when they're like, oh, I can find something great for $150 or $299. But this mic, I think, really stands tall. I think this this mic, this mic can spray in the tall weeds with the big dogs. I think that this mic is worthy of being called a professional recording tool, professional quality recording tool. Now, I want to know what you think. Okay, my opinion is my opinion. My experience, your mileage may vary. And again, I do sound I do sound good on practically every mic, but that's a function of how I train my voice, and that's a whole story for another time. So this may work for you, it may not. But for me, I am I am pleased as punch with this mic. I think that this is a mic I will be using for a very long time. And I'm really happy to talk about it. And I'm definitely going to be putting it on camera more because I think that for, for, for this kind of stuff, for content, um, for work, I think for, for anything, I think this thing's killer. The SE Electronics 4400. Have you heard one yet? I mean, like heard your voice through one yet? Because you may get this mic, you may put it up and you might be like, meh, nothing special, but trust me, work with it. Try a bunch of preamps through it. Also through it. Try a bunch of preamps with it. Put it through, put it through, this thing through a tube preamp, like the thickness of a tube preamp would be amazing for music. I bet you this thing sounds great on a Neve. But even still, using, using the Lola, which is a, you know, has a bit of a bolder sound for a more uh, lightly colored, very lightly colored preamp. Um, well, maybe not lightly colored, but slightly colored. A slightly colored sound preamp, like the Lola. I think this thing just just cooks for VO. And here I am talking for 18 minutes when I, all I intended to do was make a three-minute video. But <laughs> again, my, my admiration, my joy at having this recording tool at my disposal is, is palpable. <laughs> Look, I've even got spirit fingers. Here we go. So what do I give this mic? I, 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 should, I should give it a, a rating. I, I'll give it a solid, uh, hmm, is it an 8 or a 9? Hmm, 8.5. But uh, you know what, maybe it deserves it. I don't, you know what, I don't rate mics, that's dumb. <laughs> what do you think? That's all I want to know. All right, I can get back to work. <laughs> Until next time. This is Mark Yoshimoto Nemkov on the SE Electronics 4400, fading to black.